Hello, I am Neeraj. Today I will try to explain the concept of internal covariate shift with the help of uh, the paper of batch normalizations. I will share all the details uh, in the description box for your reference and further study. Actually, what happens these days? It is very tough to get the idle data to train the deep learning system. Several times we get uh, either corrupt data, noisy data, sparse data, skewed data, biased data, and even the size of the data will be too high or too large in number of records. Another thing, like due to those uh, huge size of data, we prefer to train the network by using batches, like mini batch. Mini batch is the famous uh, training strategy these days. So we fix some sizes like 16, 32, like that we fix some sizes. So what happens due to those uh, problems in the due to the problems in the uh, data, we face a lot of training related issues. Like uh, we face the network overfitting during the training. When system starts uh, memorizing from the training data after some epochs. we face the problem of vanishing gradients means after some epochs we we just see that uh, the training is going on epoch by epoch and uh, the system is not learning anything we also face the issues of uh, generalizability means we get uh, very good accuracy in the training but uh, when we try to test it on some different distributions we get very poor result other issues may be like the system takes a lot of number of epochs to train and every epochs you can find that uh, the improvement is too slow so these are the problems and it affects the quality of the deep learning system models also so what are the different different issues behind this actually there are a lot of issues in this uh, tutorial i will just concentrate on one issue that is internal covariate shift so what is the internal covariate shift so the internal covariate shift explains that how the differences in input data distributions to each of those layers generally affects the training of the system now in more detail actually what happens in the traditional deep learning architectures like i explained here we take input we apply some multiple layers like we have m layers then we generate some output so what happens for each layer we fed the data through some previous layers data input so suppose we had explained this through k layer we just generalize this k layer here so in kth layer the data will come through the previous layer and for simplicity we have just taken the four inputs so our input pipeline will contains the four input so these four input will be fed to these four nodes for simplicity i took just four nodes four nodes of the kth layer network so here you can see that input pipeline data w1 is fed to a simple perceptron type of architecture those four are perceptron type of architectures w1 to first node second node third node and fourth node again w2 to first second third fourth nodes of the perceptron architecture and x1 is the w1 to x1 connection is the neuron whose weight is x1 that is initially generalized randomly now what happens in a traditional way of training we just calculate the w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus w3 x3 plus w4 x4 like this so this is a aggregation kind of operations for this neuron and then we add some bias after that we add some non linearity functions so this is the forward pass 
So in this forward pass, we compute the forward pass operations. So it will generate the output W1 dash. So this is the process. Similarly, all other will generate the different different output. So in the forward pass, suppose the data from the mini batch which are coming and having different input distributions, it will capture uh, it will generate the different W1 dash, W2 dash, W3 dash, W4 dash. So this is the first part. First part. Second part, the next part of the entire training is the back propagation. So back propagation is the main part of the training of deep learning architecture. So in back propagation, what happens? In the back propagation, we just train those neurons weight. We just update those neuron weights. We update those bias. So we represent those things like the learning parameters. So we have two learning parameters like neuron weight and bias. So during the back propagation, we learn those two things. So now what happens when every mini batch, when we get the data and its distribution is different, it will propagate and at the time of back propagation, it will affect the parameter weight updation process both. And that's why the internal covariate shift related situations generally affects the training quality of the system. So now let us go into the more detail. According to this paper, authors have described that suppose we have just two nodes, so layer one and layer two. So the main training objective, suppose we have just two layers, is to minimize the loss. So minimize the loss by training some F1, F2, they are considered like an arbitrary transformation used to train those networks. So, each network having some arbitrary transformations means all network operations for example in the traditional trans for example in the basic uh, neural network node we have just described here. So, arbitrary transformation functions to train any general neural network node these are some input parameters and these are some uh, some uh, learnable parameters. So, the loss functions of this layer will depend upon the output from this part. So, all the arbitrary transformations, the data which are generated and the learning parameters here in the sec in this part will totally depends upon the data input, learning parameters, and arbitrary means uh, way to uh, way to train this network. Here you can understand that suppose the output of this part is x, then the loss, the strategy to minimize the loss for this part will depend, totally depend upon this. Means this way what happens it will propagate to the entire network and destabilizes the network. And he again explains through the traditional way like how back propagation it will be affected. So any learnable parameters, their new weight, this is old weight, this is new weight will depend upon learning rate alpha. M is the batch size, I is equal to 1 to M. So it depends upon the loss, derivation of loss with respect to those that learning parameter. So that learning parameter weight update again depends upon these two things. Means the network weight updation will also be affected those, by those things. So now what are the situations how we can control these things we cannot stop those things we can control through some mechanism that mechanism this paper proposed that is called batch normalization generally when we train 
the deep learning architecture we consider or we think that there may be some idle cases which will give very good training result so for that we use the concept of network widening if we follow those things first then we will get some idle learning strategies so network widening generally covers three things three important features first is zero mean what is the effect of zero mean zero mean means it gives some surety that we will get unique solutions i am taking all those informations with respect to input distributions i means consider those not network writing inputs according for input distribution so second is unique covariate so what is the effect of unique covariate unique covariate generally results in stabilization of network or stable network and third and important thing is decorrelated input this is very important for smooth training and good accuracy and general ability in general ability so these are the three things that we have to follow if we follow those three things with is input distributions we will definitely get a good trained model if all other network design and other issues i am assuming that it is correct so here you can see that the paper in the batch normalizations how they change those things so here you can see that in the current case when we have mini batch system with the noisy mini batch input then you can see that this is the input distributions for this part so you can see this is different input distribution from previous part this is different input distribution from here this is different and uh, finally it uh, destabilizes the network so in the rationalization paper what they did with the input distributions like here they add one batch normalization thing and after that they passes it through this way and you can see that what it resulted with this input uh, batch normalization input distributions shows some of the means it will so it will come very much near to this kind of uh, our network writing concepts we cannot say that exact but uh, near to that so due to this network per is performing better you can get better training accuracy and uh, you can uh, reduce the effect of uh, internal covariates it so this is the main thing that i wanted to convey through the internal covariates it in the next tutorial you will i will try to explain that uh, how the batch uh, normalization actually works and a lot of different different kind of normalization techniques uh, like uh, weight normalization group normalization layer normalization are working and why we need uh, after batch normalization we need uh, a lot of different normalization techniques even if uh, batch normalization try to overcome some of the problems of internal covariate shift so thanks for watching